there is no car company today that doesn't demonstrate uh, some level of uh, electric vehicle commitment. Uh, the, the great news uh, for us is that we, that needle has moved. The, 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 the car industry uh, will produce the product. Now the questions that, that start uh, come back to them is where's the infrastructure going to be? How would consumers buy it? What would be the range, the battery, the, all, all the rest of the stuff that we've been struggling with for the last uh, few years and, uh, and I believe that we're part of the answer, not part of the, the problem for them. And they start to realize that. We're not competing against them, we're not selling cars, we're providing the enabling infrastructure for them to succeed with their cars. Well, I see a better place as a, as a partner, a key partner for the uh, big automakers, because they need someone to build the network of batteries and charging stations that, and, this, and the software all around that that will make this project work. The car companies aren't going to do that, and they don't have the money to do that. They can barely get by making the cars that they already make. Well, historically, they, they aimed for a, a niche market, and we've seen the same process happen with, uh, with some of our partners. Car companies tend to design from the car out. We've designed from the systems in. And so what, what happens is that when you design a car you, and you aim for a niche market, you say, you know, my, my, my design is for Joe. Joe has a two-car garage, has a electricity in the car, electricity in the, in the parking garage. Um, goes to work, has a, has a spot to park, um, that, that Joe is a very small niche market. We're coming back and saying if you wanted to convert an entire country, not a niche, but everybody in the country, off gasoline to electric, what do you need for everybody to be able to pick up on an electric car, not an electric vehicle, not a niche? You cannot change a, an industry that is a $3 trillion a year industry, gasoline at the pipe. Uh, at, the, at the pump. You can't change uh, car industry, three trillion dollar car industry, without making a ton of money. And the reason you need to make a ton of money is you need to convince people with a lot of money to go and invest their money. Now you could come and try and, and convince people to invest uh, you know, 50, 100, 200 million dollars to do a good thing, you, you know, as, as far as philanthropy goes. But you can't convince people to invest 200 billion dollars into philanthropy. It's very, very hard. You can convince them to invest $200 billion if you can show them that you can make $2 trillion out of it. And we had to show that this is a financially viable solution, not something that is done just for the sake of, of goodness, but also it does good when, when it works. It's probably the most important mission we have today and, and on, across multiple different aspects of the same prism. Um, long term, we're going to run out of uh, atmosphere if we continue to spew out CO2 into the atmosphere at the rate we're going right now. Well, you have to consider where you are. Certain parts, at least in the U.S., certain parts of the country are very coal intensive, like the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic states and certain parts of, the, of the, the, the Mountain West are heavy coal areas. And if you convert the entire fleet uh, to electric-powered cars charging off the grid off of coal, you're actually going to end up with a worse environment than you would otherwise just burning fossil fuels out the tailpipe. So it really depends on having clean energy being fed into this grid to the electric cars. Uh, I guess you can call it a, nu a nuclear to, to grid or um, wind to car. Better Place is a whack-a-mole business. I mean, every time something comes up and you hit it over the head and you solve it, something else comes up. And it's, it's, uh, it's a, the nature of this, this new multidisciplinary uh, new generation of business. Uh, if you don't solve for batteries, you don't have a solution. If you solve for batteries, you need cars. If you solve for cars, you need infrastructure. You need that, you need software. You need to connect. All these things need to work. The, the biggest X factor in this entire plan is whether consumers like to drive that car or not, whether the experience of driving a, uh, a car without, without sound is a great experience, as some people say, or an eerie experience, as some people say. That whether the, the concept of coming home and plugging your car and in return never needing to stop at a gas station is a great idea, as some people tell us, or a terrible idea, as some other people tell us. If, if the uh, notion that instead of going into a gas station, standing up with a pipe, with, with, you know, with a pump, with a smell and the fumes, um, is something that appeals to you because you grew up with it, or that coming in and having a machine replace your battery is actually a better experience while you're still sitting in the car. Those are the things we're going to need to measure, and that's why we've taken a very careful, methodical approach in which we're installing, we're testing, we're looking, we're segmenting, we're viewing what people do. No, I've, I've seen uh, studies where only 12% of the people that they ask uh, are willing to abandon their fuel tank completely, which is not a very high number, even though these are people who want 125 mile per gallon cars. 
Maybe I could see it maybe in small areas where uh, you know new developments where you're driving to a, a short a short distance to your office and you know you can get there five miles, seven miles without losing your charge. When those habits do change and they will change, something interesting happens. If you got into a car that tops itself off every time you come back home, you won't go into a car that doesn't do it. If you got into a car where you don't need to go into a gas station and you've grown accustomed to that after six months, you will never get into a car where you need to go into a gas station every week. So that, that inertia that is holding some of the customers today on what, they, what they're driving, which may be a block two years down the road, once they've done that first switch, will become the block from any, any of those cars coming back. And once that switch happens, it's fast to cascade it through the, the rest of the population. This might be one of the fastest S-curves you will see. Now you also have to remember, we're not counting on every single person in the population to drive electric cars on day one. God forbid we, we'd get that because we will have 754, you know, 800 million cars that need to be switched overnight. So it will take time. And that's good news that it takes time. It, it takes time to sort of grow the supply chain and build the cars and get people and get the networks installed and country after country will happen. So we're somewhat counting on the fact that not, not everybody will do it on day one. It will take time. We're aiming for the first test, for the first consumers, for the, the first countries to be the, uh, the drivers of word of mouth that would propagate this across other consumers. I do see a better place working in Israel because there's the country very motivated to, to not send oil money to the, its neighbors and enemies. Uh, I don't see it working in the U.S. as much because I think Americans have this romance of the open road and they want to know that they can take their car to work in the grocery store as well as all the way across the country without worrying about running out of fuel. It's a very different environment than in an Israel or Denmark or Hawaii, other places that Better Place is looking at. So we've picked two locations in the U.S. as the first uh, two spots to, to work. Hawaii, the first, uh, the only uh, island state in the nation, which is uh, uh, a great place to start because cars don't come in or out of Hawaii. They actually drive in Hawaii. Um, and the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, mainly because uh, we were pushed by Mayor Ga Gavin Newsom of San Francisco and uh, and the mayors of uh, San Jose and, uh, and Oakland agreed on a single unified policy package across the Bay Area and the other mayors are joining them right now. Bay Area of San Francisco is, is the, uh, the location where the highest adoption of uh, Toyota Priuses has happened. And so it's, it's a location that has proven track record of adopting early technology and, uh, and high environmental awareness. And we, we believe that the Bay Area will be the, the first uh, mainland uh, contiguous 48 states location, um, most likely after, uh, after Hawaii. Both of them will be roughly at the uh, sort of the end of 2011, uh, beginning, beginning of 2012 in mass uh, consumption uh, with uh, a test running in the beginning of 2011 in, uh, in the U.S. There's three challenges I see Better Place facing. One is that the price of gasoline has fallen by half since the highs of the summertime. So people are not as passionate about looking for an alternative to the combustion engine. The second is building a network like A Better Place is talking about requires, it's a chicken and egg thing. You have to have enough stations out there for people to trust that the network is going to serve them because if they run out of gas, uh, they're going to immediately, they're going to, not, they're going to rethink this whole idea. And second and third of all is, is capital. Does, does A Better Place have enough money to build this network that they're talking about because banks aren't lending right now and if they have enough money, it may not be enough to get very far. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm into technology, I'm into innovation and big ideas and people, you want people like Shai around the world doing this stuff. Uh, but, but it's, it's as, a, as a journalist, as a, as a, uh, a skeptic, uh, I, I don't see it happening as quickly as he'd like to see it happen.